OK, so in the previous example, um, calculated the pumping energy and power requirements for uh, pumping water up 10 meters. Uh, in most cases in a, a solar uh, array, uh, there's horizontal pipe, pu uh, piping, not vertical piping. Um, you're piping uh, the fluid through the collector across a, a big horizontal surface area. And so um, that still requires energy because of the friction in the pipe. Um, so how do you translate that to an equivalent head loss, essentially? Um, and um, we do this with um, the Darcy-Weisbach equation, uh, which says, um, let's see here. Darcy Weisbach equation, uh, which says that uh, the head loss due to friction is equal to um, the Darcy friction factor, which can be looked up based on your um, various fluid parameters. Um, such as the Reynolds number, uh, whether your flow is turbulent or laminar, things like that, times the length of your pipe. So if you're pumping it 1,000 meters, that would go there. Uh, and then the internal diameter of your pipe. Oh, uh, back to the Darcy friction factor. That also has to do with the roughness of the pipe. So if you have a very smooth pipe, then you would get a lower friction factor. Um, times the average velocity of the fluid squared um, divided by two times Earth's acceleration, the acceleration uh, on Earth, 9.81 meters per second squared. So you can see already that um, the head um, over here is a is is a um, h sub f the the thing we're calculating is affected by the square of velocity which um, shows that as speed increases in your fluid, you're going to have much more, you're going to require much, you're going to have a much higher head loss, which from the previous calculation shows you have much higher energy. So if we have um, a Darcy friction uh, factor of say 0 0.2 and that's unitless um, and we want to say do a uh, pipe that's a thousand meters long um, with an internal diameter of um, about an inch 0 0.03 meters um, we're going to do it for two different velocities here. So let's say that the average velocity for the first round is 3 meters per second. Um, and we know that uh, g is 9.81 meters per second squared. When we plug all these values in, um, 0 0.02 times 1,000 meters, diameter of 0 0.03 meters, velocity is 3 meters per second squared, 2 times 9.81 meters per second squared. So you can see some of these units cancel out meters, meters, second squared, second squared. We have meters squared, meters in the denominator, so we're going to end up with meters because there's two meters up top, one below. So in the end, this is equivalent to meters, to units of meters. Um, once we crunch the numbers, times 1,000 divided by 0 0.03 times 3 squared divided by 2 divided by 9.81. Um, we end up with 306 meters of head loss. So that's what this says is that 
one pipe that's a thousand meters long and one inch in diameter at three meters per second takes the same has the same essentially energetic requirements as pumping fluid up uh, straight up with no friction losses but straight up 306 meters vertically on earth um, if we're on the moon it would take less energy just as a side note because the moon is, has one sixth the gravitational constant so you know it does it does matter these types of things though I doubt you'll be installing a solar collector on the moon for now but uh, just a little side note there all these little details do matter um, and so let's see how this changes if instead of three meters per second average velocity we have say half a meter per second um, average velocity so up here this three would change to be a 0 0.5 and we would run that calculation again um, and we would get um, let's see here 0 0.2 times thousand times 0.5 squared instead of 3 squared divided by 2 and 9.81 Forgot to divide by 0 0.3, 0 0.03. I mean, there we go. That's a better number. Um, there we get about 8.5 meters for the second version of this uh, calculation. And so you can see that by reducing the flow speed 0 0.5 to 0 0.5, we have a uh, much less. Uh, head loss or much less pumping energy required and so um, you know the implications of this are really that you can save a lot of energy by pumping slower at the same time in a solar thermal energy collection application that means your fluid would get hotter a lot faster and so um, you know this this it could be a good thing under certain circumstances and in others it could be bad because your fluid could be overheating if it's going too slow through your collector and so um, this becomes an optimization problem where you have to balance all these different uh, things happening at once um, the fluid flow as well as the rate of uh, energy being absorbed um, as well as what those maximum temperature thresholds um, are for uh, good operation of your system um, without damaging the fluid or any other components as well and so um, that that's that's sort of a fine line that that has to be walked to ensure that your systems uh, system is working correctly so hopefully that gives you a little bit of an insight into um, that on a more technical level um, and thanks for listening